I'm here at the Department of Chemistry to find out more about a new light-powered platinum compound that could provide a more precise form of photochemotherapy. Head of Warwick Chemistry is Professor Peter Sadler. When you turn the light on this compound, of course, the light activates this compound and turns it into a highly reactive compound that now can kill cancer cells. I have a group here who are addressing the problem of how to make a platinum compound that's really not harmful, not toxic at all, until you activate it with light. The platinum compounds that are in a clinic at the moment are very successful for certain types of cancer. For example, you can achieve pretty much a 90, 95% cure rate for testicular cancer in, in men, for example, using cisplatin. But there can be some side effects. They have to be used very carefully. And some cancers also become resistant to current platinum drugs. Uh, so we're looking for new platinum compounds that would not be active in any way until we activate them, in this case with a light beam. And the idea would be to activate them specifically in the cancer cells and not in the normal cells by using, for example, a laser beam. And so we would produce a drug that would be highly selective and have much less side effects than existing platinum compounds. It's somewhat from a Eureka Star moment when you find a compound that's very much better than anything you've ever seen before. But the work in this area on light activation goes back to Patrick Begnarski, really, in Germany, one of our collaborators at the moment, who originally was using some light activated platinum compounds for treating and killing cancer cells, but these compounds tended to be inactivated under biological conditions. They didn't really work with, with cancer cells, and Patrick and I, in fact, had a joint uh, postdoc uh, working with us, postdoctoral research worker with us, uh, Nicole Cratcheville, and we looked at a lot of the chemistry and biochemistry of these compounds that Patrick was originally using, and, and we could see what the problems were of these compounds. And subsequently, I had a PhD student, Philip Mueller, and we synthesized these rather new platinum compounds containing azide ligands, and uh, they were successful, but not as potent as we'd hoped. And then in the last uh, three or four years, with another research student, Fiona Mackay, We've redesigned these compounds, tweaked them if you like, and come up with a compound that's really much more potent than anything we've seen before. It's active in cancer cells at much lower doses than we'd seen before. Now this new compound is 80 times more powerful than anything else currently used. Can you explain how that is? And we treat the cancer cells for rather short times. Now, cisplatin normally, of course, is not used like that. Uh, people are treated with cisplatin for rather long times. But in this kind of treatment, you want to treat uh, the patient uh, with the compound and then irradiate with light for short periods of time, maybe one hour. You don't want to be sitting around for days. You want a short treatment time and a short burst of light. And then under those conditions, our compound is much more potent than cisplatin is. European academics have brought their expertise into this project, including DNA work by Professor Viktor Brabic from the Czech Republic's Institute of Biophysics. It's also meant that new techniques are being used. Warwick's Anna Pitharo has been working on cell analysis using an ICPMS spectrometer, which is able to clearly detect the uptake of the drug into cancerous cells. My involvement has been uh, working together with Fiona Mackay in the analysis, in some of the analyses that have been done on the drug, in collaboration as well with samples that were prepared by Yuli Goods in the University of Tandy. For this specific uh, complex and for its characteristics. The tests were carried out in a, a specific photobiology lab. They are very different for the normal protocols that we normally use in cell testing. Because it's been investigating over many years, there are lots of things that we do know now about its mechanism of action. So I see platinum-based drugs as very promising, but obviously cisplatin is go many side effects, the administration of cisplatin in patients and chemotherapy. And what we are doing is trying to overcome these side effects. Our approach is that the drug is administered as a pro-drug, so it's meant to be inert until you do photoactivate it. And that's very important because if it is inert, it can be all over the body, but it's not going to interact with any tissue unless you are irradiating it. 
So in the place of the radiation at a certain wavelength, this pro drug, which is inert, is going to be activated into an actual drug and is going to kill wherever you want the cells to be killed. Although this work is in its early stages, it's hoped the platinum compound could be used in a new type of photoactivated chemotherapy, treating a range of cancers, especially surface cancers, which can easily be prepared for light-related treatment. It's important, of course, that the, the region that you're treating is the region that's illuminated with light. You might not need complete darkness, but you want the intensity of your light beam to be directed towards the cancer cells. So what's the future for your research on this light-powered platinum? When will we see it in hospitals, for example? It takes uh, five or sometimes ten years to go from the chemical laboratory bench into the clinic. Clearly there are many other stages of trials which have to go on beyond the chemical bench, beyond cells in culture to real models of cancer in order to prove that these compounds would be safe, to prove that you can deliver the light and so on. But we're excited because it brings together not only us chemists, it brings together the biologists, it brings together the photophysicists. This is an exciting period for us.